So my name is Linda Picula, and I work for the NOAA Central Library, which is located in uh, Silver Spring, Maryland. But I'm located here in Miami. Um, I'm the regional librarian for them, and um, I manage both the library at the Atlantic Oceanographic and Meteorological Laboratory and the National Hurricane Center Library, which is on the uh, Florida International University campus. Um, the NOAA Central Library is organized, I'm going to talk to you in acronyms because I've worked for the government for a long time, but um, the NOAA Central Library is organized under what was known as our U.S. National Oceanographic Data Center. And um, this is where we would deposit all of our data, uh, our scientists' data and, and their collaborators and people who receive funding from NOAA. Um, the National Oceanographic Data Center recently changed its name, and it is now part of the National Centers for Environmental Information. Uh, so that's uh, no more uh, U.S. NODC, it's the U.S. NCEI. And there are five data centers in NOAA um, dealing with all types of data, um, biological, oceanographic, atmospheric, um, coastal, um, anything uh, uh, our scientists study. So following this, this session, you should um, be able to discuss in, uh, new and developing methodologies as well as data mandates by scientific funding agencies and governments. And I'm going to give you a, a comprehensive document that gives some um, outlines of data life cycles for various universities and government agencies. Um, as students, you will understand the e-science mandate and life cycle and your possible roles in this. And you will become acquainted with benchmarks in managing the scientific output of your organization or country. And understand the roles of data managers and information managers in research data management and how you can become collaborators in research data management. And you will also recognize, I hope, the importance of good research data management practice. Now, how many of you in this room are data managers? Um, raise your hands. Um, I see four hands, five hands. How many of you are scientists? Five hands. Okay, how many of you are marine information specialists or librarians? One, two, three, four. Four, okay. Big data. Big data is on the covers of Science Nature, The Economist, uh, Wired magazines, and uh, The Wall Street Journal and The New York Times. Uh, but despite the media hyperbole, as Christine Borgman points out in her recent book, Big Data, Little Data, No Data, uh, in the examination of data and scholarly research, having the right data is usually better than having more data. Little data can be just as valuable as big data. In many cases, there are no data because relevant data doesn't exist, can't be found, uh, or are not available. Moreover, data sharing is difficult, incentives to do so are minimal, and data practices vary widely across dis disciplines. Um, Christine Borgman, you may have heard her mentioned in the first talk yesterday, she's at UCLA and she's um, uh, an often cited authority here in the U.S. and internationally on scholarly communication and data. And she argues that data have no value or meaning in isolation. They exist within a knowledge infrastructure 
an ecology of people, practices, technologies, institutions, material objects, and relationships. To manage and exploit data over the long term, Borgman argues, requires massive investment in knowledge infrastructures. At stake is the future of scholarship. And everyone in this room is concerned with scholarship and the results of scientific research. So the, um, the document that I mentioned earlier, organizations and disciplines have different data life cycle models. And this document, the CIOS Data Life Cycle Models and Concepts Report, uh, was put together by the Committee on Earth Observation Satellites Working Group on Information Systems and Services and the U.S. Geological Survey Community for Data Integration and Data Management Best Practices. I'd like you to all go to this URL and I hope you can access this paper because there were two different sites. Um, one, you needed to have a subscription that wasn't very open. And uh, I think this URL should bring you to this document. And in it, you'll find some data life cycle models. Um, and the contents table uh, enumerates them. Uh, there's a digital curation center, the University of Oxford research data, um, NOAA environmental uh, data life cycle functions, the USGS scientific information management. Um, let's see, and um, the US Department of Health and Human Services, University of California in San Diego, and um, various other life cycle models. And we're going to go back to this document later on and examine some of these. So um, I have another quote from Dr. Liz Lyon from the UK. We must build the links between research data, scholarly communication, and learning. She made this statement when she was working on a a JISC project in the UK to do just that. And with the composition in this room, I, I think you'll see that we, um, with our respective jobs, we can all work together to make this possible. I have an example from a CIOS report of a, li a research data management cycle, and this is from Western Australia. And you can see the cycle beginning with the initial concept, planning, planning including intellectual property, documentation and metadata, storage and backup, sharing and reuse, retention and disposal. And we touched on that a little yesterday. Uh, proposal creation, project startup, data collection, project conclusion, reporting and publication, and initial um, and back to initial concept. So here's our cycle. And take a moment to see where you might fall in that cycle in your day-to-day -day